Good morning, Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your off-season edition of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for Wednesday, December 27th, 2017. This is the last video discussion of 2017. The first one of 2018 will happen on January 1st, and we will begin 2018 looking ahead to the 2018 hurricane season plus winter weather and we will definitely be on the lookout for any major winter storms because the pattern is changing as we speak to very cold over the lower 48 a good deal of it anyway the eastern two-thirds uh, something we haven't seen in a few years really at least to this extent it's going to be very very cold I'll talk about that on the tail end of today's update first of all some pretty noticeable changes here in the Southern Oscillation Index, that is the measurement of the pressure pattern across the tropical Pacific. Notice that the average for the last 30 days really took a fairly substantial hit. Now it is below zero, it's negative 0.55, and so that's pretty high off the mark there. On the negative side, from the November uh, reading, of 10.40. Now we'll have to see, you know, this is the 30 day average. We'll have to see what December comes in. December has 31 days, so I would imagine, unless we see this number come up, which is today's contributor uh, to that overall mean, you know, the average, um, if, the, if we don't have any more positives coming in, we're going to really have taken a hit here to the Southern Oscillation Index. Now, what does that mean? Well, typically, just a real quick recap, when these numbers are negative, let's say it was negative 14 in the long term, like if the 90 day was negative 14, that's typical of an El Nino pattern because the trade winds typically reverse or certainly slow down in a pattern like that and you get warming of the tropical Pacific. And uh, when it's positive, like we've seen since, you know, really August, September, October through November, then you get this La Nina pattern setting up. And that's what we're still in, even with this fairly uh, quick shock to the system here in December. If we look at the anomaly chart, you know, this is pretty revealing. Look at all of that blue indicating negative anomalies or below average readings across the equatorial Pacific. And it's a quite a remarkable looking pattern there. Let's change the color here to white. I mean, look at all these little curls and everything. That's just so neat how we can see that. And, you know, we're firmly in the La Nina right now. It will take time with a uh, lower Southern Oscillation Index uh, for things to react. All right, it's a slow motion process. But it's just interesting that December probably going to end up a little bit on the negative side. We still have four days to go, so you never know. It might be a couple of points negative and we'll just keep track of that that's what I like to do in the off-season version of the hurricane outlook and discussion is we can look at these puzzle pieces such as the SOI because that affects the ENSO or the El Nino Southern Oscillation phenomenon and a fancy way of saying is this warmer or colder than normal and then of course we keep track of this and this is remarkable very very warm Atlantic most of the main development region here Above normal, there is not a patch of blue in there anywhere. And the northern Atlantic up here, quite a bit above the long-term average. And we just watch this over time. And it's just like looking out the window to see what the weather is doing instead of necessarily worrying about what the computer models show. Um, and even though I'm going to show you that in just a second, sometimes the models just aren't that helpful when you're talking about several months down the road. I mean, come on, sometimes you can't even rely on a two, three, or four day out in the future weather forecast. It's just the way it is. The atmosphere is chaotic. But nevertheless, the early December Climate Prediction Center uh, International Re Research Institute, that's what this means here, their probabilistic ENSO forecast, that's El Nino Southern Oscillation. So your climatological probability here uh, as we go through the next few months, a decline in the La Nina, meaning that overall the equatorial Pacific waters will gradually moderate. And then by the time we get to the spring, should be in neutral conditions in here. 
and then a little bit more than a 30% chance probability, whatever you want to call it, of El Nino coming back by July, August, and September. This is at the very end of the forecast outlook, I guess you would say. Uh, and so we'll just wait and see how all of this progresses. Again, this is something that we can look at on a weekly to monthly basis as we go through the next several months. After we get through December, we will have five months left until hurricane season begins. Another parameter that we can watch, this is the subsurface equatorial temperature anomalies. So this would be the top of the Pacific Ocean here, the tropical Pacific. This is over on the east side of the Pacific over here. There's 100 degrees west longitude as an example. And then way over here is the western Pacific, all the way over to 140 east longitude. So this is a vast area of the equatorial Pacific covered spatially. And then we go down from the surface here to about 450 meters deep. That's a terrible straight line, but you get the idea. And then in here are your different isotherms of, uh, well, lines of equal temperature. This is what the contours look like. And so everything that I've highlighted in the red area would be your La Nina signature, all that below normal subsurface water. And then this is a fairly large pool of subsurface warm water that has developed over the next, uh, over the last several weeks, not the next several, although it might over the next several weeks continue to develop. So real quick, what would we watch with this? Well, with a negative SOI, then you might have a little bit more of a mechanism to drive the trade winds more this way, or at least relax them to allow this warm water pool to expand and make some headway eastward. So this, and I talk about this often, this helps to predict the future. You know, you can look at these charts all you like, but this is a snapshot of what's going on but it's also a look at the future because what happens with this? Big question mark. You know, and what happens with this? And with a negative SOI, if that sustains, then this starts to make headway more towards the east. You erode this large area of cold, and you start to change the pattern in the tropical Pacific. There's no way to know with any certainty whatsoever if we're going to be headed towards an El Nino, I doubt it. That usually doesn't happen right after a pretty solid La Nina. More than likely, just looking back at history, warm, neutral conditions next summer, that's probably what will happen, at least going back on what we've seen in the past. So we'll just wait and see. But this is a chart that we can track and keep up with over the next several weeks and months. And I think the biggest thing, obviously, is let's see what happens with this warm pool. And how much progress does it make? Does it get reinforced with more warming over here? Or is this all there is? And that's what we saw last year. A warm pool like this developed. A lot of people thought, here it comes, another El Nino. And it kind of came over and dissipated, and there was nothing following it. And now look what we've got. We have a La Nina. I'm just saying. All right, actual sea surface temperatures. Now, this is going to be fascinating to watch. <laughs> over the next couple of weeks or so. Um, this is today's update. Here is your 80 degree Fahrenheit line or 26 degrees Celsius. So, you know, the loop current in the southeast Gulf of Mexico is still quite warm. Your shelf water up here very cold relative to what you're used to anyway, especially in the summer. Now, with this massive blast of Arctic air that's coming down, you're going to get a lot of cold air advection over the Gulf of Mexico, meaning that the cold air is literally going to just spill in like molasses or very thick syrup spilled on the kitchen table and it just spreads out. Well, that's what's going to happen. This cold air is going to bleed down into the Gulf. We're going to push a front, an Arctic front, all the way down. So let's see what this looks like in about a week. <laughs> You're going to notice some pretty big changes, especially up here in the northern Gulf over the more sensitive shelf water areas. And the same will hold true here off the East Coast. Very warm water temperatures here in the Gulf Stream area. There's even an 80-degree isotherm right there, 26 Celsius or so, uh, right off the coast of South Carolina and Georgia. Uh, and you know, even the Gulf Stream out here, pretty warm, 24, 25 Celsius. And here, too, watch as the cold air comes off the continent, 
and kind of pushes this farther out, you're going to see a change in this over the coming days. And it's interesting, you know, if we go back and look at the anomalies, very, very warm water here off the East Coast relative to average. All this cold water, all this dynamics in the atmosphere setting up, yet we have not had a major winter storm per se, at least for the East Coast cities, the big ones. Erie, Pennsylvania would argue against that, but that's lake effect snow, a little different. But we haven't had a big blockbuster, you know, where you had a clipper system come out, develop off the Carolinas, and then come up the East Coast uh, delivering, you know, 30 inches of snow and 80 mile an hour wind somewhere. We haven't had that yet. And I just have to think with all that warm water, relative to average, it's way above normal in this Arctic air that's coming in, that somewhere in this region is going to get a big winter storm before the mid part of January. You would just think that would happen. But maybe it won't. We shall see. So let's move out of the tropics talk, so to speak, and look at lower 48 weather. Check this out. This is the snapshot here as of 7 a.m. Central Time of actual temperatures. These are your observed temps up here in the Dakotas and Minnesota. Minus 20s and... Th oh, man, look at that right there. Pass. Minus 31. No, thank you. I, I like dynamic weather. You know, I mean, when it's sunny, if it's July or August or whatever and you're out on the beach, you like it sunny, at least me. But when there's a big thunderstorm, you know, hurricanes are exciting. They're not, that doesn't mean that they're good, but they are inherently different and exciting. They're very dynamic. A blizzard is very exciting and dynamic. And I guess you could say that minus 26 and whatever is dynamic temperature-wise, but no thank you. Um, you know, Two degrees in Illinois, okay, that's cold. Yeah. Um, 21, I'll take a 21. Okay, 21 degrees I can handle, at least if it's you know snowing two inches an hour and the wind is blowing and the sea spray is spraying. That's exciting, but when it's, you know, minus 31 in clear skies, yuck. That's just horrible. Anyway, I went on a tangent there of, oh, look at that, minus 38 up here in Canada. Are you kidding me? That is just insane. Um, the Arctic air is here across a good part of this area. And like I said, it's just going to drain south. And it's going to push more south than east in this particular pattern. And there's going to be areas down here along the Gulf Coast that are going to have some massive hard freeze problems. Uh, and this is going to be very serious. So kind of putting the serious hat on here. Really, this is a big-time weather event. Temperatures, you don't think about that. You know, when it gets really hot, I guess you do, but now it's going to be really cold, and colder than we've seen in a few years, and so people need to be ready for that. You really do. Uh, animals, you know, your equipment, you know, whatever, your pipes, anything you need to do to mitigate against damage from cold, yes, cold, it's coming, so be ready for that. Uh, a good source of information, just like I always point out during hurricane season, weather.gov. You want to try to understand, well, yeah, what, what's going to happen? How cold is it going to get? What can I expect? You know, there's weather apps, there's weather on television, weather on Twitter, social media weather. And yes, there is plenty of weather fake news out there, people just putting info out there for clicks and likes and shares and all kinds of sensationalism. But the weather service is very objective, so go to weather.gov, put in your zip code, and just as an example, put in mine in Wilmington, North Carolina, and you get a good return page of what to expect. All right, so with this cold coming, we don't have any particular uh, watches and warnings which will be listed in here in red, um, but this will really help you. All right, so, you know, it's been a few years. Seriously, people might be laughing. It's a big deal. It's just going to be cold. It's winter. Yes. But for the last several years, 14, 15, 16, into the winter of 17, now we're going into the winter of 17, 18, really since 2013, after that year, we really didn't have very much in the way of brutal cold. Well, in 2015, it was up in New England, but in terms of this widespread nature like we're seeing now, no, it's been a while. So this is what the pattern looks like. All right, here's the lower 48, east coast of the U.S., there's North Carolina, Florida, and here's the West Coast, British Columbia, California, and the Baja of uh, the Baja Peninsula. And um, you're safe down here in the Bahamas and the Greater Antilles, Jamaica, all that. Okay, you're good. 
It'll be a little cooler after this, but at least it's still in the 70s and 80s. So this is what the pattern looks like now. You can see this is the 500 millibar chart. Nothing but giant troughiness and low pressure up here all over most of the eastern two-thirds of the lower 48. And if I put this into motion over the next seven days, I promise, there it is. This is how it evolves. Look at that. Just low pressure, low pressure, troughiness, northwest flow, draining that cold air down into the lower 48. Yuck. And it's interesting because I don't see any major winter storms coming out of this in this pattern. See, we rewind it, do it again. Lots of energy and vorticity uh, and potential energy with all this coloring that you see. And, you know, but none of it ever bundles. Remember, we talk about that in the tropics. None of this is coming together, you know, for any one big East Coast storm or anything like that. Nothing gets originating in the Gulf coming up the East Coast. I don't see anything there. You know, a few of these little systems drop through. Um, and certainly the lake effect snow machine is going to be in massive overdrive up here uh, in the Great Lakes, obviously, but no concentrated areas of energy making their way up the East Coast. I just, you would think sometime in this pattern that that will change. And this is what it looks like a week out, January the 3rd, 2018. A little bit of jet stream energy down here. Some impulses, ah, you know, maybe this will do something. We'll have to see. But that's what we'll talk about on Monday, next Monday, a few days from now, right? All right, that's it. Again, this is what we do in the off season. I take a look at things that we watch for the upcoming hurricane season, those larger puzzle pieces, and then a look at lower 48 weather with the eyes really being on, you know, will there be a big East Coast winter storm? Because... Uh, from time to time, I will go out and we test equipment. Maybe there's some new things we want to try out. And it just keeps me on my game. You know, winter storms are kind of the second cousin to hurricanes. I mean, they're not related in any way, obviously, but they're all, you know, weather. And that's what I uh, try to keep an eye out for. In the off season, it gives us something to do until it's hurricane season again. All right, that being said, thank you all very much for everything you did either just by watching these videos or the interaction on Twitter or even supporting our efforts financially through PayPal or our Patreon and you know your feedback people offering help everybody contributes one way or another that's a part of this either by just visiting the website watching the videos and beyond I really do appreciate it and I'm working on very very detail oriented with this the 20 th 2017 edition of the tracking the hurricanes documentary i'm going to try to get that done in january it's going to be over two hours in length and i think you're going to really really like it um some of the best music i've ever composed for one of these things i do all the music for them myself uh using keyboards synthesizers and you know some of it's just improvised and i go with what i feel and it's all coming together. I still have about a third of it to go, and then that'll be out. And you will see when it's ready. Uh, and I will put it out on YouTube and, of course, available on DVD and probably on Vimeo as a rental, what we went through. You know, and kind of a look at it through our eyes, 2017. So thanks for making this a very successful year for our projects, for um, you know everything that we have moved forward towards over the last... 19 years or whatever it's been really came to fruition in 2017 and we've got a lot of things planned for 2018 which we will start talking about in the next update even on Monday as we get into 2018 so be safe out there on all of your celebrations and you know, then we want you back to watch these updates and um, it'll be here before you know it 2018 I'll be the first to wish you a happy new year maybe not the first but I tried anyway and uh, really, do take it easy out there. Be safe, and I'll talk to you again uh, after the new year. Again, I am Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com. I appreciate you, as always, tuning in. And I'll talk to you again in 2018.